All right, welcome to okay. welcome to protection and policy for September thirteenth, two thousand twenty-one. Uh, we'll have a roll call. Alder Stoyer, I am here. Alder Stevens, here. Alder Vanderlust, present. All Alder Lefebvre, here. Okay. All present in the comment for. Ringing. All present and accounted for. Next. Are we ready? Ready. Yeah, I'll destroy her. So, yeah, I'm uh, yes, I'm sorry. So, yes. um, uh, clerk, uh, uh, Mary, she got married. So, um, she is leading the meeting tonight. And so, I'm going to beg your patience as she learns how to click through. So yes, mm -hmm. we're ready to go on to the next item. Who's 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 doing the meeting again? So you'll see her name here is Mary Safransky. Um, Mary got okay. married. So All right. Titanic Mark. All right. Okay. So we're on to the next item. Go right ahead. Right? Okay. Uh, approval of the agenda. I need a motion. Motion, motion to approve. Motion by Stevens, seconded by Vanderlees. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, that passes unanimously. Let me know when you're ready, Mary. <clears throat> Mary? Just one moment, please. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you for your patience. Mary. Yes, all right, are you ready, Mary? Yes, I am, thank you. Okay, uh, approval of the minutes, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion by Vanderweese. Seconded by, Second. all right. Seconded by uh, Lafave. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I oppose that passes unanimously. Please let me know when you're ready, Mary. All right. Thank you for your patience. You go ahead, please. All right, regular business, number one, consideration of possible action on an appeal by Jessica Bedoyan regarding the denial of her operator's license previously held over at the August, previously held over at the August 23rd, 2021 Protection and Policy Committee meeting. Staff. Uh, yes, so uh, staff's recommendation is to appeal um, as the applicant is a habitual law offender for offenses that substantially relate to the license activity and is therefore precluded under state statutes. Um, I have provided the applicable offenses um, and convictions in a separate memo that was provided to the committee um, for the appellant. Um, I did want to address that, um, I believe in the appellant's um, letter, um, she indicated that there was no, that um, there was an error um, in <clears throat> the citation of a conviction for disorderly conduct with motor vehicle and, uh, or theft. And after reviewing her rec record, I can confirm there, there was no indication for a DC with motor vehicle or theft, um, as was indicated in her denial letter. But all the other applicable offenses that were cited in her denial letter were correct, and though there was an in your memo. So we're taking the second memo that is out there. That's the one. That's the one we're looking at right now. Yeah, that one has both the histories for both appellants. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Attorney Bungert. Uh, police. Uh, police concurs with law. Okay. All right, uh, does the committee have anything to say initially? Otherwise, I'd make a motion to open the floor. Um, I'll make a motion to open the floor. Okay, okay. Either okay. One. motion by uh, 
Lefebvre seconded by Vanderleest. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All, all opposed. That passes unanimously. I'll just wait for you, Mary. Do we need well I you can go ahead, thank you. All right. Um is there anybody here? Jessica, are you here to speak on your behalf? Yes. Okay, just state your name and address for the record. Jessica Bodoin, 521 Met Street, Green Bay. Okay. Pepper 302. All right. All right, well, you have the floor. Well, the committee will probably ask a few questions as well, but uh, I think we normally ask, you know, you have a number of things in two, well, 2021, 2019, 2014, and 2010. So I just, uh, you know, if you could briefly speak to it and tell me what uh, remediation you've done, if you've gone to any programs, do you have any bosses or other people that can vouch for your, uh, for you? Well, I, so go I ahead. Think, I think some of it's coming down to my driving after revolt, but I am getting my interlock put in and um, I got court the next time on October 26th and all the charges will be dropped. And that'll be on, I'm thinking of the number would be, I'm just looking at what year that is. Tampering. Well, with, um, I was on house arrest last year for my DUI and then there was COVID. So then I lost my job and my place of business closed down. I get to interlock in. None of the businesses were open at the time. So I just, I guess I just took a chance and just drove. Okay. And then you got so, stopped. Yeah. So now I'm going to court and I'm almost done with my, I only got two more classes left. And that was your third? Was that your third OWI that's listed here? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I got court in October, and as long as I have my interlock put in, I won't have the driving after revoked. Okay. Committee? Any committee members? Do you have anything to ask of Ms. Bedoyne? Alder Lefebvre? Yeah, I'd like to ask her. Um, I see in 2018... To 2015, 14, 2015 and 2014, you had you know, marijuana and um, marijuana. No, 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 no. You're you're looking at the wrong thing. Oh, am I? It's down further. Yes, okay, it's I'm above. Sorry. It's above that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, okay. I, I, I but smoke. I do see no. some. Okay. Well, then it, that should not have been put in there. Okay. The, the 2014. There's a big gap. Can you tell me what happened? Why you know? That's an awful long time to go without um, OWI. What do, what do you mean? No, I'm just saying, you know, was it something that you, something happened that you all of a sudden you went, you started drinking again and driving or? Uh, I had, I had bowling league and I came home kind of early and I ended up having a, a fine that wasn't paid for yet. So, and I, didn't know I had a warrant over it. It was like a hundred eighty dollar fine, and I got pulled over for it. So, I mean, it was my reasoning for my third DOI and my BAC levels wasn't very, very high. So I got the least amount that you could get. But yeah, I did go. I had bowling league, and I came home and got pulled over for it. So it's pretty much the gist of it. it was I was home kind of early, so. Yeah, there's times where I had a few drinks, you know, and then but I went home. So it's just I didn't get pulled over for a DUI. It was for the warrant. But then they smelled alcohol on me and did all the sobriety tests. What type of warrant was it? Uh it was a it was an unpaid fine. What from from 2014? No. Uh it was probably a year before that. I don't know. I didn't know I had a warrant over it. So, well, if, if, if you had a warrant, what type of warrant was it for? Um, I just had an altercation with one of my old bosses, and then he dropped the charges, and then I really didn't even know I had a fine over it, and let alone a warrant. Joanne, is is it? Can you verify that? I I don't have um that warrant or the lack of payment on that warrant or on that fine. It, it was all it's all dropped it's supposed to be dropped and then it ended up getting dropped in 
it's not listed as a as a conviction. Um, no, uh, right. I understand that, but Jessica did bring that forward to us. So. Right. I, I don't have, I don't have yeah. that information. We just reviewed. it was supposed to be dropped to begin with, and it never they never put it through the system. So I end up getting a warrant over it, and then it got dropped after, but a little too late. But I don't see why you had to pay a fine if it was dropped, unless it was for cost report or whatever. No, they just never put it in the system after you said you dropped the charges. So police, can you answer yeah. to that at all, please? Now I'm looking through their the paperwork here, and I'm not. I don't see where that would have yeah. happened. If, if she got an altercation, it probably have been like a disorderly conduct or something to that effect. I'm just right. Not seeing but, it down in here. But she said her boss dropped the charge, so I or so I. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure that out because that would be another another thing we'd have to consider. But it's not on. It's not on her record. So. Yeah, that was the Have second time that? that I got pulled over for a warrant when they were supposed to take it out of the system. And I, yeah, that was a while ago, the first time when I had a warrant and it was, they brought me into jail and then they let me go when they found out that they didn't put it through, they didn't put it through their computer system. So, and then I had to sit there for 36 hours. So Monday morning, that was, that was a while ago. So I don't know if they just don't take care of it right away. That's the kind of the first I've heard of something like this. So I don't know. Yeah, but it's the second time it's happened to me. <laughs> but to then I was on no C. <laughs> Go ahead, Attorney Bunger. To clarify, so the the warrant isn't in the the right. background paperwork right. because she, there is no conviction or or right. anything okay. with respect to the fine. So right. that was the basis for which she was pulled over, but yeah. it has nothing to do with the citation and conviction that she received for the OWI third. That is what um, is being, that was considered as a basis for her denial, not the reasoning for why she was pulled over. So okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Well, you just asked for how it came came to it. You just wanted right. to, so I was just explaining. Yeah. Mark, but I got the a reason was supposed to be disorder, The reason it said on there was a disorderly conduct and couple other things which actually never happened like hmm. which not there, so we, don't, we don't consider it we don't consider it because it's not on the list so we're just I mean, looking at what's we're looking what's on the list so don't even worry about it okay okay all the vandalist you had a question i just want to ask jessica how, how are you moving forward jessica so that you know you're going to be within all the guidelines of of the law and, and if you've made restitution on all the back fines and things like that, have you done all that already? And, yes, and you're, sir, taking, you're, taking, you're taking treatment programs as well, is that correct? Yes, I got two more classes left for that. Okay. I just go through it with American Foundations and I do Zoom counseling, but with COVID and everything last year, a lot of things were yeah. backed up and I switched counselors too. So then I had to start all over because that one ended up quitting. You know, and like I said, I'm trying to get the interlock in. I made appointments through the jail when I was on house arrest last year to go in and get my interlock put in and to come to find out that was even closed down. Now, are you working presently? Are, in other words, your job, are you at a, at a job at this time? Um, well, I'm waiting to make sure I can get my license still. I was bartending and, all the way up until I got the refusal letters. So I'm waiting for the appeal. Where's that again that you're at? What's that? Where, where do you work again? Someplace else. Okay. Fire Mark. All right. Go ahead. Are you done, Alder Vanderlees? Otherwise, I'll ask Alder yeah, Lefebvre. Thank you. Okay, Alder Lefebvre. Go ahead. Uh, I don't see in our packet here, uh, Jessica, do you have a letter from your employer? For what? A recommendation that we. Uh, I never knew I would have to ask for one. I. I just got an email we, saying we usually I got the like, suit. I'm sorry, we usually like to have that to see, um, you know, if there's anybody else that would support your, um, your, you know, that you're going towards sobriety and, you know, it helps us to decide to give you, you know, that license. Yeah, I, I, no, nobody told me anything. I just got an email saying that I have a Zoom appointment and for appeal. So if I... You know, I don't have a lawyer or anything, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do. No. You, you don't need a lawyer, but yeah. I know. Uh, we've, Mark, we've done this before sure, where I we know. didn't approve it until we saw a letter, one letter of recommendation from like her, her employer. 
Where or somebody has, else, somebody else too. They can for that. license. I mean, yeah, you can. Yeah. I mean, I'm through my counseling and my ODA. You know, I don't know. My counselor yeah, could maybe do one, but I never knew I would need anything. Well, you know, yeah. we understand that, but I think it, it always helps. So, Attorney Bunger. Yes, I just wanted to clarify for Ms. Bodoin that in the initial denial letter that you received from the police department, it does list different types of various um, pieces of evidence that you can provide to the committee at your appeal time um, that would sufficiently uh, provide that you have um, rehabilitated and are fit for the license activity. Um, so if you want some examples of what would be provided, um, that list is in that denial letter. I, I read it. I didn't see anything on it. It just said to appeal to email this address, email address and. Well, do we have a copy of that letter? I mean, I, I'm pretty yeah, sure it's in there. It's it's in the packet. All right. I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah, could you could you share the screen if, if possible? Um, I don't or believe I, I can do that simply because there's um, sensitive information and, uh, and all right. the applicant, but okay. um, That's I fine. can verify if you just give me a minute, you can continue discussing. Joanne, well, um, what's that? Joanne, if uh, I found that OWIRS with the uh, warrant, if you want to know anything about that. Okay. Uh, it just said that the warrant was for, um, uh, looks like theft for theft of movable property warrant. It was like $176. So regarding that letter that Jessica re received, it would be on the second page of that letter explaining mm -hmm. evidence. And Jessica, the letter you got on the bottom, the last line says, in addition, as part of your appeal request, you may submit competent evidence of rehabilitation and fitness to engage in the licensed activity, which will be considered at the appeal hearing. It's right there. It's right I there. Have, I wouldn't have anything like that yet until all my classes are done. Well, well, granted, you could get a letter from, from your boss, the person you're going to work with. I mean, this is where you have to be a little proactive in people. You know, you could say that, hey, I'm in the midst of my a rehab program. I got two more, two more to go. I mean, we found that out now only because you told us, but we didn't have that information ahead of time. So I'm just I, saying, didn't know, I, I didn't know what I'd have to do because I'm not done with it yet. So I didn't know how I could right, show you the proof of it. Well, either way, go ahead. All the Stevens. Well, hold on a second. All the Stevens and then all the LaFay. Go ahead. All the Stevens. All the LaFay can go first. Okay, go ahead, all the LaFay. Okay, I was going to say in the bottom of the letter, it states you, know, right. you can con contact the uh, city clerk 448. Three zero ten zero. Three zero one zero. Three zero one zero. Three zero one zero. And you can uh, you can get a letter of recommendation. Go to your boss where you are working and get us a letter of recommendation. And if you have anyone else that can ver you know verify that you are on your way to sobriety. And, the, and that gives us a reason uh, to maybe I think grant it would you this be, license. I think it'd be better off to get it from my counselor because my boss is never there. Oh, Where you can get okay. that would this yes. letter. This letter is dated July twenty second, so it's been almost a month. So it, it's I out there. We all well, see yes, it. I didn't. I didn't know that I would have to bring something or do something after well, the Zoom appointment. Well, either way, that's part of the deal. So. Uh, Although the fade, did you want to you you mentioned something the way we've we've done this in the past? Did you want to bring forward? Um, let's see. Did we? Or, how did we wait, let's close the floor first, unless we have okay. other questions. Do we have any other questions of Jessica? No. Okay, so I will entertain a motion to close the floor. Motion, motion to, to close, close the floor. floor. Okay, by Stevens. Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder Banner. Aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. All right, um, Alder Lefebvre. I'm trying to think how to how would how did we do it? Like, I can do it. We put a date Alder, on Alder it. Stevens. Alder Stevens can help with yeah. that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I okay. The motion. I would make a motion that we hold this until our next section policy meeting in two weeks, 
so we can get clarification from her employer and also from the committee that she has two more um, programs to finish. Um, I think that would be official, beneficial to both of us, or all of us. I think. Is there time sensitivity on this? It's like anything else, I guess, but you know, mm -hmm. two weeks, I, I think that would be fair. I, I do my classes at, like bi-weekly, so do I gotta have them finished or just get a no, letter? From no, just get a letter, just get a letter. If you get a letter from a, a friend, it's anybody that can vouch for your personage, you know, anything. Alders, we really should. It should be from the- We need to reopen the floor. Yeah, we should yeah you're right about that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Jessica, you got to hold on. The floor is now closed. Ted, you had something? No, no, okay. All right. Is that the motion now, Alder Stevens? Is that the motion? Yes. Okay, do we have a second? A second it. Second I have a, uh, uh, yeah. Father Dorf. You're on mute. I, okay. I, 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 I need it. I, I can tell from listening that Jessica is having real trouble understanding this. I'm not talking to Jessica right now. I know the floor is closed. And right. I would, you know, encourage Jessica to figure out who her alder person is and to contact that alder person via email and to ask for some help. Um, Jessica's record is not very bad compared to some of the ones when I was on protection and policy. So I, I just think Jessica doesn't know how to do this. And I would just hate to see her not be able to get her license because she isn't aware of the procedure. And I just don't think she's aware of the procedure. So I know you can't talk to me, Jessica, and I can't Jessica. We'll contact her alder and we'll get some help with this process. And um, Alder Scannell has his hand. Hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll hold on. Yeah. Alder, I was going to say Alder Stevens. That might be your district on Mech Street. Anyway, um, Alder Scannell? Yeah. Uh, we can speak to her. She just can't speak back, Alder Dorf. So if there's anything right. you want to tell that her, right. you can listen. In other mm -hmm. words, and, and I would recommend, could we, I recommend to the committee that we uh, direct staff. You know that uh, what you read at the end of that that's pretty technical. If we could add some some examples like letter, you know, letters. There from, are. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I didn't. That wasn't there right is. in. Gotcha. Oh, so I didn't know it was there. Okay, then. Uh, yes, no. that's there. All right. That's All right. That's All there. Another question. Go ahead. All the Hold it to the next protection policy. And then, how does our city council fall in that? Wait more than a month, because so, Tuesday, hi, Toronto, the city this council. Is, this is Clark Jeffries. So we have uh, we have you have protection policy committee meetings the week of the twenty seventh, and then we have council on October fifth. Yep. Oh, it works. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it's okay. So it's like. Well, it's about three weeks. Okay, I hope that's not. Yeah, we don't well, want to spend too long. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's it's a little bit of a time frame, but you know, Jessica, and you can't talk back. I'm just saying that it's what we are probably looking to do. So we got to vote on it. So, okay. all in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed. All right. That'll be uh, at our next meeting, Jessica. You don't. No talk, I want to let you know that our next meeting will be September 27th at 5.30. It'll be a Zoom meeting. Just be prepared to have your letters, even if you're not complete, you know, with your program, but just stating as such, uh, all our Attorney Bunger. Yes, Jessica, this is uh, Deputy City Attorney Bunger. Just wanted to let you know, um, when you do receive any kind of, you know, certificate or letter from your counselor, whatever it is that you want to present to the committee, send that to the clerk's office uh to jamie fugi in the clerk's office um and then she can add it to the packet for the committee to be able to review ahead of your appeal so you don't actually have to present anything on camera at the zoom meeting um it will be in the agenda packet for the committee members so just email whatever you have ahead of the meeting um the the cutoff is usually um, 9 a.m the friday prior um, and then that'll be included for everybody to review 
Okay, thank you for that. Uh, hi, sorry, Chair Stoyer. This is uh, Clerk Jeffries. It really, we really need that information the Thursday before, not the Friday before. Okay. Thank you. So September twenty uh, third, correct? September twenty third for the September twenty. And you and yes. Clerk Jeffries, what time? Yes. By noon. By noon on Thursday. Yes, please. Thursday noon. Thank you. Okay. All right. She's she's still here. So, if you have any questions, clerk's office, Jessica at four four eight three zero one zero. If you have any questions about this, all right. So we're ready to move on. Mary, let me know when you're ready. We all we all voted yes. Right all right. Number two, consideration with possible action on an appeal by Jason Newmeyer regarding the denial of his operator's license. Attorney Bunger. Yes. Uh, staff recommendation is to deny as the applicant is a habitual law offender for offenses that substantially relate to the license activity and is therefore precluded under state statutes. Yeah. And again, um, the appellant's um, convictions that were related or substantially related to um, the operator's license are listed, listed in the memo um, in your packet. I'll just mention it was a little, just a little confusing. You had both uh, people on the same file and i think that's yes, what we usually, we usually do that Absolutely. but i can i can separate them out yes, just to so be on the safe you. side just 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 separate them just to, okay. just okay uh, police police your take uh police concurs with law okay all right uh well we've mr newmeyer i presume is here so i if somebody doesn't have any questions initially i would entertain a motion for someone to open the floor Motion to open the floor. Motion by Stevens. Do we have a second by Vanderleest? Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, uh, the floor is now open. Mr. Newmeyer, are you here? Yes, sir. And I, first of all, I would like to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to discuss this topic with you. Okay, um, I know your name, and a, name, and address, name and address, that's all we need. Oh. Jason Henry Newmeyer, uh, 1128 Pine Street, Apartment 6, uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54301. Okay, uh, we'll uh, ask, be asking some questions of you and, and such. Um, I was gonna say, committee, do you have anything initially? I've got a few things after the fact, but if anybody from the committee wants to chime in right now, have at it. Otherwise, I would, I would ask uh, Mr. Newmeyer, uh, First of all, you are, you know, and I know it's in the packet, but just please state what you're trying to uh, come for. You know, you're looking for a license, correct? Yes. Um, so I, I'm looking to get an operator's license to get a second job so I can help make some money to pay off. I know um, my record on paper obviously does show that I was at one point a habitual offender and the operating order folks is strict because of the fact that I wasn't allowed to get my occupational license uh through the dmv um and so i had to get to work now i have just transferred my main job to green bay here at ace marine uh and i'm just trying to get a second job so that i can try and pay off fines and get my life back i haven't drank alcohol since october 5th 2019 the date of my last ow um and you know it's hard for me to explain to someone that i have change because not a lot of people with my record do change i understand that and uh based off what i heard on the last case obviously like i can get a petition with 50 people signing it to, to vouch for my uh sobriety it was just unfortunate that i had to drive an hour to work to sturgeon bay at uh bay ship where i was currently or was previously employed um it's owned by the same company that or the same company owns the shipyard I'm at now. So I just did it in, in transfer so I can walk to work so I don't have to drive anymore. And I'm trying to get it so that in the bar that I was looking at being employed at is a block away from my residence. Okay. I, I, I didn't check everything here. Do you have letters of uh, recommendation at all from various folks no, or not? And, and no, sir, I, I do not. And that's why I just heard your previous statement with uh, that last lady there. And um, I, I, can do exactly what you would ask of her. If you'd like, I can have a petition with 50 people signing a, a testing to my sobriety. Well, you can understand our frustration is then I can talk to attorney Bungard about that as well, because it's, you know, it's, it's good to have this information ahead of time. Mother Lafave, 
and then I'll then uh, all this too. Then. Yeah, sir. Uh, the best is you know from your employer at the bar to verify for you, and then your other employer maybe you know too that um, your work ethic and uh, you know I think th those are very helpful for us to know. I can do. Yeah, it I helps can, to I'm... understand your situation now, how you improved your life. When they verify for you, they're not going to say, they're not going to just, you know, say, oh, yeah, yeah, he's great, you know, blah, 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 because they could also be, you know, technically in, in trouble, maybe, you know, too, so. Not lying, and there is nobody in my life that has to lie no. on my behalf, and I would be more than happy to both get letters from both my current employer and the one that I look at and, and other other people in my involved in my life if that would be something but i'm most certainly willing to do that and then come back um at the next policy and protection meeting and come come to you with that paperwork um uh vouching for what i am saying for and, people and that, time, yeah. the time frame works for you then uh, i was the 27th monday the 27th yes I believe, was yes. yes that would but be perfectly have... fine with me um and i need to get it in on the thursday before that correct Mm -hmm. to the clerk of courts the city clerk city clerk city clerk Green Bay attorney city. Bunger? jamie it's, Fuge, it's, jamie fuge right a few G. jamie fuge is who i need attorney bunker okay. something attorney yes. yes i just wanted to interject just to kind of advise um the committee with respect to what's um uh, sufficient evidence to to overturn the appeal. Um, certainly, uh, letters of recommendation I know frequently are provided to the committee, and those do serve as a good source. Um, statutorily, um, what is considered competent evidence and requires us to or requires the committee to approve a denial is completion of probation um, or a certificate of completion of probation um, as well. So, if any, if if Mr. Newmeyer has any of that paperwork that he would also like to submit um, in addition and have the letters of recommendation as supplemental evidence, yeah, ask, um, that certainly um, is. Yeah. Do you have, <laughs> sir, do you have the initial denial letter that you received from the police department? Um, I do not believe, I may, I may, I do not have it on me at this very, very exact okay. moment. If, if you do not have it, um, uh, we can arrange um, to give you another copy um, that lists examples of what you can provide um, as far as evidence of, it's essentially evidence that serves that you have rehabilitated and are fit for this license activity. So completion of probation and parole, um, as well as completion of different um, rehabilitation programs, alcohol programs. Yeah, I already, um, I have, I actually finished for my third OWI, I finished my program like before the court date with the court was even okay. like, I, I served my, my sentence after I had already done that. And I do have proof that I had completed um, my, um, I believe it's a um, repeat offenders uh, class. I mm -hmm. do have, I know I have the paperwork in my files right over here. So that's something I can most certainly photocopy and send mm -hmm. it along with uh, a letter from the, my employers. Yes. So all of that can be submitted to the clerk's office and then all of that can be reviewed by the committee at the next meeting. I just wanted to clarify yes. for the committee's purposes. Well, attorney, as well I, as far I, I, as I what you can be asking for and, and right. what um, actually has a higher weight and value right. over, over other items. Well, I, I appreciate your insights on that. And, and again, our committee is, is is good at looking not only at these letters, but also at the record itself. So we're, we, we, we need to look at that as well. So um, does anybody have any other I'll questions? Make I'll Mr. make a motion, Mark, that we hold it to the twist. That we hold but, Mr. Alder, Mr. Alder, we got to close the floor first. Okay, I'm sorry. Motion you to close the floor. Okay, do we have a second? Second by all the by Vanderlees and seconded by Stevens. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Vanders. Aye. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. That passes. I love the names. I do. All right. Uh, the floor is now closed. So, Mr. Newmeyer, you need to just uh, no interrupting. We'll, we'll, we will discuss some things here. Uh, other Stevens, do you have anything right off the bat? No, I'm, I'm I'm impressed. So I want to see this paperwork from him. So, okay. Uh, Alder Lefebvre, anything? Okay, Alder Vanderlis, do you want to make a motion? 
Yes, I'll make a motion that we hold Mr. Newmeyer's uh, until September 27th at our next committee meeting and we review his case at that time. Okay. I will second that. All right. Motion by Vanerly, second by Stevens. Any other discussion? All, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Hey, Mr. Newmeyer, September 27th, same bat time, same bat channel. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, uh, let me know, Mary, when you're ready. We are ready for you. All right, consideration with possible action on a renewal application for a Class B combination license by Strats, Inc. at 2850 Humboldt Road, filed with the City Clerk's Office 615 of 2021, previously July 26, 2021, Protection and Policy Committee meeting, staff, so um, this was held over um, on initial recommendation from staff to deny um, as the establishment is in operational um, and hasn't been since its initial granting. Um, and I believe there was some um, testimony from the applicant um, that they were looking to try and secure a, um, a buyer for the property. Um, and so the uh, committee um, elected to uh, hold the renewal app or deciding on the renewal application until this meeting. Okay. And po police? Uh, police concurs with law. Okay. And then Alder Stoyer. Um, yes. Thing I'd like to add. So this is uh, Clark Jeffrey speaking. Um, last year, this was, uh, they, the stress was approved in 2020, but never opened um, due to plumbing issues and plumbing orders. And so they, those plumbing orders still remain. And so I just want to bring um, to the committee's attention that this is not quite the same situation we had a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, because a particular entity does not have, is not ready for opening because they have inspection issues. Okay. Thank you, clerk. Um, I have a question for the clerk. Go ahead, Alder Stevens. Clerk, yes, Alder Jeffries. Stevens. So these inspections that were fallen on, on, on this property, when was the deadline for those inspections to be finished? Deadline is really mid-April before renewal. Okay. And they're that still out. Yes. Any, any other of the committee? Yeah, it seems like they've had some time to look to deal with this. Other Lefebvre. Is there anybody here to speak on this? I'd well, like to know uh, what yeah, the we'll situation open, is. Sorry. Sure. We'll open the floor in a, we'll open the floor in a minute. So I'll make a motion to open the floor. Okay. By Lefebvre, do we have a second? By Vanderleest, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that passes unanimously. Uh, the floor is now open. If you care to speak to this matter, please state your name and address for the record. And, uh, well, we will proceed. Is there anybody here to speak to this? Do I have to say it three times? <laughs> Is there anybody here to speak to on, on the uh, license by Strats at 2850 Humboldt Road? Do you have an opportunity to speak to the committee? I don't hear anybody. So I would make a motion to close. Motion, motion by the floor. Second by Stephen. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Craig, your picture's out if, if unless you don't yeah. care. <laughs> he doesn't want us to see him. <laughs> you know, we know what he looks like. He can't hide. All right. Uh, the floor is not closed. Um, yes, go ahead, Alder Lafayette. Do you know whose district is that? Barb Dorf's? Alder Dorf's? Mine. Oh, it is it's yours. Okay. Stevens. You got any? Have you had any contact <laughs> with this uh, individual in business? I have not. They haven't contacted you at all. Mm. Oh, geez. Uh, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, I, uh, attorney, or uh, I'm glad that Clerk Jeffries brought up that that issue. I wasn't aware of that either. You know, we were kind of holding on. You know, I think yes, with no. Guys, yeah, go ahead. Yes, right. To confirm, I, I did advise the um, the committee at, at that point um, at our initial meeting. Um, right. That it, the reason that we're, we held it back was because of the 
argument that they presented that they were trying to secure a buyer, but um, I, I believe I did in my notes um, provide okay. uh, for the committee at that at our initial meeting on this item. Alder, okay, Alder, Alder Steven. Yes. Bill Pappy is on. I have a question. For oh, him. yes, go ahead. Okay. Mr. Pappy. Fire away. So okay. regarding so regarding this establishment, we are on the understanding that they have not fixed the issues at hand. How many times have you been out to this property since April? I would have to research it. I do not uh, handle that part. That would be Paul Van Callister and the okay. trades inspectors. But if you give me a sure. few minutes, I can look it up. Oh, perfect. That would be good. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we have any other questions initially, because you know, if we move on to the next agenda item, I just soon deal with it right now. We might have to wait a minute or two. Can can we uh, go on to the next one and come back? Can we do? I suppose we can. Attorney Bunker. Can we do we, that? We can do a motion to hold um, to pick this up item at the end okay. of the agenda. All right. So, I'll make a motion to make, move it to the end of the agenda. Okay, by all favor. Seconded by Stephen. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 No, aye, all opposed. Okay, we'll, we'll wait to hear from Mr. Pappy afterwards. Now, if he if he interjects, Attorney Bungard, we can talk right away then, correct? Because he, unless he wants to wait. Because there might be an agenda item that takes quite a while. So what I'm saying is I would prefer if he could just interject back into the meeting. Well, I'm sure he's on regarding one of them, so. Yeah. Sure. When, when he comes back, I'd like, I'd like him to be able to speak at that time. In order to, to, to keep the record clear, um, we, we should. Just move it to the end of the meeting? Correct, yes. All right. Okay, I tried. All right. Uh, Mary, are you ready for us to move on? Yes, we are ready. Oh, Bill, are you ready? Yeah, I got my Eclipse orders up here. Um, from what I can tell, it looks wait, like there is only... Wait, hold on. Are we legally... Since we're right within the recording of, uh, is the flow of the meeting is going, we can we can pick up discussion. On okay, it. so yes, disregard our... Yeah, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, yes. we're not... We're not Alders, we don't need to do a motion consider you can just elect to continue discuss discussing and then doing a, a, a motion on this, we, this time. we need to vote on it let us know otherwise i entertain bill mr pappy to speak and you got a set term again okay all right thank you go ahead all right mr pappy go ahead uh, all the students right. had a question for you all right alder steve the address in question is 2850 humboldt road correct yes Okay, well, from the notes that I can see, um, there is one, uh, there's an order under uh, plumbing. Um, the inspections were conducted on in July, on July 20th, and that order is still pending. Um, I do not see um, any other follow-up inspections past that um, at this time. I just see a plumbing, uh, a plumbing order uh, that Inspector Jason Slacky has opened yet. So was there a timeline when that was to be finished? Uh, August 19th of, well, this was 2020. So it was, oh. it, so this is one that's the liquor license that's pending is from last year. So the inspection date was 720 of 20 of 2020. And it had a one, uh, one month follow up had to be completed by 819 of 2020. And it shows it is still pending. It was an air gap required in the ice bin drain. Oh, so it sounds like Oh, that, that, the whole year. I, I I understand the pandemic and all, but Alder Stevens, what's, what's your thought? My thought on this is that we um, do not issue the license. Let me before we, before we second it. Uh, all the attorney Bunger, is if if we deny this, then the uh, the person could re reapply, so to speak, for that for that license. Is that how no. it would work? Right. So procedurally, because we're, we're doing a renewal, um, the the committee can deny the renewal, state the reason, 
but the basis for the denial of renewal on the record, which is that the business is in violation of section 4.7 um, of our ordinances and it's not operational. Um, and then if council approves that um, at the council meeting, then our department sends out a letter to the licensee, letting them know that their renewal, that, that, the, that their liquor license is not being renewed for the 2021, 2022 license year. And then they have a certain window of time to be able to file um, a request for a full evidentiary hearing for um, essentially that license being taken away. Um, and so then they would be, they have the right to be able to um, appeal in front of um, protection policy and that goes to council and then they can thereafter appeal that decision to circuit court if they so wish. Um, so. Wow. All right, that seems uh, cut and dried for the most part. I I kind of concur with Alder Stevens. Alder LaFave, you have something you wanna say? And then as uh, Alder Stevens was asking, I think then, you know, when they go through all this, they're still, you know, they don't get their renewal. Um, there are, you said there are six licenses currently available that they could fix their problem and then they could apply. Uh, yes, that is correct there. But, you know, I just want to caution you that that number is always fluid mm -hmm. and we have oh, yeah. uh, several entities who have already put their hat in the ring. So just so okay. you that thank you. Okay. So there might not be something available, but this is something, I mean, it's gone back so far. Are. That's the problem. You know, in 2021, he could have done something um, when things, you know, things were opening up quite a bit and things are moving along that he, you know, should have done something then. I could see 2020 having problems, maybe getting someone to come in to fix it, but this has gone on way too long. So, yeah, I will second that motion. I'm just surprised they're not here. You know, that would, that would help. So, yeah. yeah. Motion, uh, what was, re repeat the motion again. I'm sorry. So the motion is to deny this renewal due to what? What's that due, Joanne? <laughs> due to the fact that the business is not operational and in violation of section four point seven of our ordinances. Thank you. Right All right. So we have a motion by Stevens, second by Lafave. Any other discussion? I. You know, I feel bad about this a little bit, but you know, it had time. If, if it was just a month, like I could see something different. But it seems like the, that there was time, much time, to reach out to others. And I, and, and according to Bill Pappy, it sounds like you know this has been going on for a while. So, in the inspection department, is contacting owners and letting them know that you know we, we need this is it. Here's your date. So. So I, I concur. So we yeah. all the faith, then we're going to vote. One final comment is that from the um, uh, the cannery, uh, completely different because of the condition of the building and it you know, was not done. If he had fixed it, then we probably, you know, probably right. renewed it. Well, so well, I just want to make that thing. comment. I think that should be sure. the minutes to I be can, Yeah, I can. Good point. Thank you for that. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously. So, Mary, let me know when you're ready. Ready. All right. Number four. Consideration with possible action on a request by Alder Brunette to consider a refund of inspection charges for 2593 Sumac Place. This item was held over at the July 26, 2021 and August 23, 2021 Protection and Policy Committee meetings. Uh, before we move on with this, I, I spoke with Alder Brunette and uh, he, he would like a motion and uh, to allow he and the owner owner work with city staff on this you know they, they they just as soon meet with city staff and try to try to hash this out so that that's his request so i would ask for a motion to that effect before we make that a motion and joanne's raising her hand so 
Ms. Well, Lambert. fine, that's fine. I'm just going with what Alder Burnett requested, and if there's some change to that, so it'll be a attorney bunger. Yes, so my recommendation then would just to do a receive in place on file, just to do away with the item, and then staff can proceed. Okay. Um, and the motion can also include language that for um, for staff to to work with the property owner moving forward, but just to um, deal with the refund request. Um, yeah, we're that on that. so we don't we need to clarify that you said in the you know if he wants to work with the, the alder along with city staff on that or just receive a place on file. It it can be either or whatever whatever the committee um, wishes to do. Motion to oh. receive it placed on file, Mark. Wait, I have a question. Okay. Yeah, yeah go I ahead. Call this, call this, call this Stevens, go ahead. So this has been in front of us, what, twice already? And it seems like several. it's going several times just keep the ball just keeps rolling down the road. So well, you know, now we now we see that Cheryl's here today. So I would like to also hear her opinion on this situation. So Cheryl. Alders. Yeah, yeah, fine. Go ahead, Cheryl. Um, so uh, Bill Pappy actually has the history on this case. I think it's a $50 reinspection fee, but I can tell you that our department has worked with this owner. Uh, we, we've gone to the point now where I'm a little, I'm going to need a little bit of guidance from this committee on what working with the owner means. Uh, because, yes. You know, we, we've laid out kind of the options mm -hmm. and, and the code is where it lies. You can either do this or you can do this. And we've made suggestions on how to make that easier. So at this point, I mean, and, and Bill, stop me if I'm wrong. We're trying to figure out what that means when you say work with the owner. Bill? Yep. And we're also talking about one $50 reinspection fee on an expired permit. So um, that's the which that, that's the issue in question. $50? That's yeah. it? Yeah. Correct. Yes. Well. <laughs> You know, I was listening to Alder Burnett on this, and he's at another function, so I was trying to be as open as I could be on this. And he said he's really working with the owner, but with that being said, you know, I, I'm I'm fully confident that, that Mr. Pappy and, and Cheryl have worked with this person, and I, I don't know if there's some federal regulations because of floodplain and different things that are going on that maybe, no? So we wrong, don't have- Wrong, wrong, wrong property, Alder Sawyer. Oh. Yeah. That, thank you, thank you for that. No, that this is this is I regards I believe twenty five ninety three Sumac Place. I right. Believe. I'm just trying to pinpoint that again because I remember. Yeah. Okay. It's, you're right. The issue you. in the issue in question is a uh, it's a three stall attached garage. The small third stall at the end does not have a hard surface going to that garage opening. Um, so several several years ago, our office received a complaint. Um, the owner had taken out a permit in 2019 to address the issue. Um, he had a year uh, to do that. We also gave him an, an, uh, a further extension, um, had not got it completed. So the issue is he either needs to one hard surface that area leading to that third, third, third stall for the attached garage, or he needs to return it uh, to uh, a green space or landscaping somehow so it can't be used. Okay, so he's had he's had plenty of time. Yep, and we've well we've communicated if, that with him. Okay, so if we, Attorney Bungard, if we receive and place this on file, it effectively kills it unless they decide to bring it back. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I well, who made the motion again? But we Alder can. Make, Alder Vanderlees did. Okay, Alder Stevens. But we can make a decision tonight as well. Regarding fifty. I wouldn't advise that at uh, this point because. These hearings do function as a quasi-judicial hearing, meaning mm -hmm. we need to have both parties present in order to make a decision. Decision, um, right. Effectively by the property owner not showing up and communicating via alt, via his alder or her alder that they want to proceed working a, a settlement of some sort with staff. Um, it's essentially dismissing their appeal request. Um, and so then we just receive and place on file. So, is okay. the owner is is the owner here? I guess I, did, did we. I just wanted to double check. Is the person here the owner of that property here? If not, then we move forward. All right. Well, for by Vanderlees, and we have a second second by Lefave. Correct. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, and any other discussion to receive on place and file? Uh, we all in favor, please say aye. Okay. Oh, so all those scannel, yeah. all those scannel. Quick, quick question was for staff, for, for legal. So if, if there's another, let's say this goes back to staff and staff works, tries to work it out and they don't get it worked out and they come back to the committee again. And if the owner does not show up again, does that then mean that the committee cannot go forward? No, no. I, th I think you mean in the sense that they just don't appear and don't communicate at all. No, then at that point, the, the okay. appeal request can be denied. In this situation, the circumstances are a little different in the event, in the sense that Alder Brunette has indicated to the committee that the parties are looking to settle versus defaulting on the appearance altogether. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, well, so any other discussion? I'll, I'll do a little fave. Go ahead, I'll do a little fave. So I'm, I'm sorry, did I understand that we should, it be best to receive and place on file than to deny it now? Okay, okay, I just yeah. wanna be clear on that. Yeah, that, and okay. that was explained pretty well. I appreciated that, Attorney Bungard. Um, okay, let's vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mary, let me know when you're ready. <laughs> I'm all set. Thank you. Wow. I didn't know there was a party going on. All right. Uh, number six. Oh, number five, I'm sorry. Consideration with possible action on a change of agent for Marcus Cinemas of Wisconsin, LLC, Marcus Cinemas of Green Bay East, and Kepler Drive, staff? No objection. Police? No objection. I would entertain a motion. Motion, motion to approve. approve. Motion by Vanderleest and seconded by Stevens. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Oh, aye. Alder Lefebvre, Alder Lefebvre has something. Go ahead. I go by the highway. I don't go actually. Well, I've gone by that area too. Are they actually open? Yes. It sure yeah, doesn't look course. like they're ever open to me. Well, yes. And so well, the, the issue with a change of agent, all this, so yes, Marcus Cinemas is open on both the east and west sides. And the issue for a change of agent, as you just to reiterate, mm -hmm. is that essentially when the, there's a, a change in staff, especially at an organization like Marcus, and they need to have someone who's an agent for the liquor license, they need to give us a change of agent form. Um, and so that's what they're doing. And yes, they are open and they have a, 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 a liquor license. Were they open uh, last year in 2020? Um, intermittently. Okay. Um, and I, you know, you would have to go back and look precisely at Marcus's um, policies for opening during the pandemic. They were closed for quite some time. And I do know on both the east and west sides of town, they were open for certain kinds of, um, like they were open to go get popcorn. I don't think yeah. you could take out okay. uh, beer or wine at that time, but yes. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Thank well, you. All the Lefebvre suggest you get your family and friends get, up, get over there. <laughs> Anyway, that's another point. All right. Um, so we do we have a motion here? I think we had a motion, didn't we? Yes, we did. Okay, and a second. All in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed. That passes unanimously. No wait for Mary. Ready for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, number six, consideration with possible action on a request by Baker and MacArthur Inc. someplace else at 1605 University to extend their licensed premises to the southern half of their parking lot on September 25th for an outdoor event. I thought I heard someplace else tonight, right? They were talking about that. I thought they were talking about someplace else, like way out. Anyways, never mind. All right, staff. Staff has no objections. And police. Please have no objections. Okay, one point. Have they had this event before? Um, not that I know of. Um, Mahoney's out for the next uh, week or so, and I don't okay. call him saying well, anything about it. But yeah, we have no issues with it. We looked at it. All right. 
That's always a good thing if you've got a couple and couple of years of you know to show that you've done well. Alder Stevens, motion to approve. All right. So we have a second. Second. Second by Vanderlees. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, Mark, Mark, Mark. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I just question. Um, I'm sorry. Someplace else. I just can't place it. <laughs> it's someplace else. I think it's on, it's on the uh, corner of it's on University and uh, yeah. I think, believe Elizabeth, that corner there. Right That's there. correct. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't go to the bars anymore. <laughs> what? Okay. Mark, no, no, don't tell me that. I think the family goes to bars now. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. You're good now? Yes. You're good? Okay, all right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously. Let me know when you're ready, Mary. Ready. All right. Number seven, consideration with possible action for the city of Green Bay to adopt resolutions supporting clean water and treaty rights concerning pipelines. Number three and number five. I'll do my seatbelt on, so I'm ready. Does anybody uh, else? Go ahead, Alder Scannell. Well, uh, this was brought forward to, uh, by Joshua. They brought, came this, brought this to me. There was a, uh, I don't know if anybody else went to the, I don't remember seeing anybody else, but the, there was a, a rally at the city deck a few weeks back uh, for this project, um, for this protest uh, of the project. Um, what I did, uh, Joshua did is they provided me with this uh, resolution. Uh, they got it, I believe, mostly from Madison, which passed this resolution. I went through and edited some things out, made a few changes. And uh, so that's what's before you. Um, I'm hoping that we could just, um, uh, after discussion here, uh, possibly um, just have staff look at it and then bring it to council right away. I don't know if there's, we need to really bounce it back here and then uh, to, to uh, council if we have a good discussion here right now. Uh, and I know there is someone uh, from, uh, I believe he's for Joshua. He's certainly been involved with this. Uh, so I would recommend you open up the floor, Justice. Justice. Okay. Well, we, we will do that. I just wanted to make sure uh, all the scandal you brought this forward. So obviously, I would think you're in favor. So I, I uh, yeah. you know, there's a lot of whereas's that speak about, you know, the facts, you know, just, you know, such and <laughs> such, but then it gets into other things as well. So I would just say that, you know, I, I fully support this in that, you know, uh, having a pipeline go through the Great Lakes, I think is insane. I don't know. I mean, there's one there now and, and I think that should be turned off and, and removed. I mean, to do any more, I mean, uh, uh, fresh water is a, you can't live without it. And to risk polluting that uh, for what? I mean, uh, this pipeline doesn't even have anything to do with the United States. I mean, I'm all for being a good neighbor with Canada, but I mean, uh, that's just insane to, to, to risk polluting our great lake. Uh, I probably should have done some research, uh, all this panel. Do you have a, there was no map here. I just wanted to you know line three and line five. You know, I, I, I see some of the description, but was there anything? Yeah, you know, goes, we can look it up ourselves. From one point in Canada to another point in Canada. Mm -hmm. to, okay, to, well. It's not a supplier for us at all. I'm a, I'm a map guy. I like, I like looking at graphics, so. <laughs> And then, helps. and then lastly, with the, the treaty rights, I mean, they, uh, and it's part of our, what we've brought forward as a sustainability commission and as a council that, you know, uh, social justice, when it comes for infrastructure, I think, you know, minorities have been too long bearing the burden of infrastructure needs, and it's time to uh, reassess how we, we do that. The, the point that I see, the point that I see is talking about the you know, history of catastrophic oil spills. Now, you know, of course, catastrophic could be, you could layer it out in any number of ways. Well, anything in the Great Lakes is not going to be good. No, I know, but I'm just so saying that, I, yeah. you know, those, those things, you know, if they're factual, you know, like it's yeah. listed. Anyway, Alder, Alder Lefebvre. 
Yes, um, I believe number five is that not under the Mackinac. Mackinac. Street? Yeah, Mackinac Streets. I believe that's where that is. But um, I wanted to mention with your resolution, isn't there uh, all those whereas you got commas after? Proper yeah. English, you do not put them. I know that's something that <laughs> another alder brings up all the time. Well, um, when it comes to the grammar, you can do whatever you want. Or and I am not really yes, sure. we can clean. Uh, yeah. They put them in yeah, there. Clean it up. <laughs> that can be cleaned up easily enough. Alder Dorf. Thank you. Um, I, my first question is Is this going to sustainability, the Sustainability Commission first? Well, I, I I didn't want to go to. The, I'm sure the Sustainability Commission's on board with it. If if it went, it should have gone there first. If we wanted to send it to them and then to committee, but that would have taken more time. So I, is this time sensitive? Is, yeah. Yeah. Why, this is why is it time? Why is it time sensitive? Yeah, that's well, my question. Perhaps Justin could answer that better. I, I try to remember. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for that. Um, I still have the floor. I. I'm concerned because the last time we kind of rushed into um, doing a resolution, there were so many questions about it. And there, you know, I don't think it had been properly um, looked at enough time taken by staff. I guess Justin will explain or Justice will explain why it's time sensitive. But um, even though I think this is a very good idea, I would be reluctant to rush into it if there was a chance that we could have a little more time to do some of the research. This is a pretty technical. Um, there's a lot, you know, right. There's a lot there. So that's all I have to say, thank you. Okay. Well, I would- uh, Comment whenever you got time. All right, then we'll open the floor. Uh, well, attorney Bird first, attorney. Yes, just for timeline purposes, um, the, in reviewing the, the um, resolution briefly, um, essentially how it could go is if, uh, committee does approve the resolution and it goes to council for full discussion and approval on Tuesday. Um, at that time, council can certainly, um, all their alders can and, uh, put more input into it as well. Um, changes can be made. Um, and then um, and then if it's approved, then it can come back to the next council meeting in full resolution form. Um, the other option is always to refer to staff, um, to revise, um, and then also have further discussions at council, then again, staff would um, work on the resolution and finalize it for the next council meeting, which wouldn't be until um, the end of September. Well, I think I Justice, I don't Justice can talk, talk about that a little bit, but I, we, we have an option here. We can either, you know, vote tonight and regardless of how the vote goes tonight, it'll still go to council. I, I think the council should weigh in on this in a sense. I know you don't want to do committee work, there, but you know, all the scandal mentioned that you know sustainability, in a sense, should have done this. I think initially, but we'll we'll open the floor and we'll listen to justice on this, and then we can. I'd like to just make a comment. Yeah, go ahead, Alder Van. Uh, I think the resolution here. I think we're kind of jumping the gun. They don't really have any homework done at this point. Uh, it should be the Indian Bureau of Affairs should be you know, chiming in on this and, and the United Tribe should be chiming in on this. The United Tribe is a sovereign nation. I, I think that they have more clout with, with the Indian Bureau of Affairs as far as, you know, about pipelines and, and the city council definitely doesn't know the law practices of the, of the Indian Bureau of Affairs. So I, I think that, you know, it really should be sent back as far as First of all, the uh, Indian Bureau of Affairs and, and the United Tribes should be, you know, uh, on this. I, and I agree, I, but but I think we should at least open the floor and listen, and then we can discuss afterwards. We can do that, but but I think that you know we're just trying to jam something through, and and, and it should go in the proper channels. It, it should actually, uh, uh, you know, be at the governor's desk as well before we even. In other words, this is a resolution. Do we have any? Do we have any clout as far as uh, you know? Well, it's a resolution. It's more or less. I, my 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 take is it's a resolution that you know we we've done other resolutions in the past, and it more or less just states out there that 
Green Bay is agreeing or disagreeing generally with, with the resolution. But I, I think if they want to get into the real meat of it, you know, the Indian Bureau of Affairs is in, in uh, Minnesota and, and, you know, they deal with these situations and they know all the law practices and the tribes know the law practices and, and they might be a, a bigger help than, you know, than- Okay, well, if, if all right, Alder, Alder Scannell, do you want to go ahead, Alder Scannell? Yeah, yeah, I think you're making way too much of this. It's a non-binding resolution and all we're doing is stating, do we support uh, keeping mm -hmm. our uh, Great Lakes uh, free of uh, pipelines? And I, I think we as a city can have the right and, and certainly should do that. And do we support treaties, uh, enforcing treaty rights? Uh, this has nothing to do with the Oneidas per se. They're not involved in this at all as far as being affected. It's not their treaty rights that are being affected. We stand by uh, treaty rights that the United States has made or that any uh, sovereign nation has made. We stand by uh, uh, enforcing those rights, uh, respecting those rights. So all we're doing is a non-binding resolution saying we believe in these principles and that's it. Either you believe in the principles or you don't. As far as the okay. whereas is, you know, if you think any of them are too technical, I mean, again, they're just put in there. The real meat of it is the conclusion. If you want to take out a whereas or change mm -hmm. a whereas, go ahead. Uh, like we did with the last one. They're really not all that material. What matters is the, the conclusion and do we stand by it? Uh, the whereas is just are different things that are used to support it. And if you don't like one of them or think one of them is confusing or whatever, we can pull it. It's not that important. It's not that significant. These are our principles. Do we stand by them or don't we? That's it. That's all we're doing here. Oh, it's quite lengthy. It and like Alder Dorf said, I mean, it's got a lot there. I mean, a lot of times resolutions be a page or a page and a half. It, you know, and it's three, almost three pages. So it, it, there's a lot there. And there are some things that, you know, you, you'd have to do a little research on just to be don't caught up. Them. You don't like them? Pull them. You, you want to research? Oh, no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, you know, we some research might have to be done. That's all. I'm saying you don't need the research. I'm saying if you feel that there's an item there that needs to be researched and we can't answer it now, pull it and take it out. It's well, not I'm, important. It's for not myself, important. I haven't had a chance. I haven't had a chance to look at this. Well, as much as I would have liked, you know, at any time. I mean, we get a lot of issues in committee and at council. And I just, I think, just to make a really well informed vote, it would be nice to just have a little better handle on all the information. I, I don't doubt much of this, okay? But I, I'm just saying that uh, before we continue on, we'll, we'll be discussing this with the committee and the other others after that, but I think we should open the floor and uh, listen listen for that. So I would entertain a motion to open the floor. Motion, motion open the floor. floor. Stevens, do we have a second? Vanderlees? All right, all in, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, the floor is now open. Um, please state your name and address for the record and uh, we will proceed. Hello, are you muted? <laughs> You're muted or can't hear. No. Are you yes. there? Yes. Okay, I just, or we can't, the sound, just state your name and address for the record and then uh, we'll proceed. Yeah, Justice Pache, am I coming through all right? Yeah, yeah. you could just get a little closer to the microphone, I guess, that's all. Okay. Uh, well, that's fine, you're outdoors, so. Uh, uh, state your address, please. Yeah, that's 12994 Belt Avenue, Swamico, Wisconsin, Five four three one three. Okay. Well, Justice, is, that's correct. Your name, Justice. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Justice, you did hear some of the questions and some of the dialogue leading up to this. So, if you can help clarify a few things, that would be appreciated. Um, you know, I think uh, you know a lot of us. We've lived here a long time, so we do have some understanding of, of things, but. If you could uh, clarify a few things, that would be fine. If you want to speak generally about the resolution and, you know, how it came to be, 
Um, and then we also could ask specifics if need be. So go ahead. Yeah, first of all, thank you for taking the time to consider this, that um, it is being put through Oneida's business committee. Um, so that's in the process of being passed there. Um, am, am I still coming through all right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so it's in the process of being passed through the Oneida Nations Business Committee, um, them being so close to Green Bay of Lake Michigan, relying on water and having a relationship with the Anishinaabe who are the main ones resisting this pipeline up in the northwestern part of Wisconsin, in Minnesota, and in Michigan. That, uh, that the Oneida and the Anishinaabe share wampum, which has uh, cultural significance equivalent to a treaty. And uh, the wampum is the one dish, one spoon wampum, uh, basically a treaty that both nations will work to protect natural resources, protect the land. So it's upholding uh, an ancient treaty between the two nations. So that's one reason also them being so close to the bay, why on these waters. Um, with the timeline, line three is currently being constructed in Minnesota. The expansion of line three, I should say, that there is a line three in the ground at the moment. It starts in Alberta, Canada. It ends in Superior, Wisconsin. And Embridge, the Canadian company that owns the line, they're working on expanding line three. So it's taking a new route. It's cutting through a few reservations along the way, and it's being expanded to carry nearly double the volume of tar sands. And if completed, it would carry <coughs> a equivalent of 50, or emissions equivalent, uh, 50 coal-fired power plants every day. So not just a violation of tribal sovereignty of nations that don't want the pipeline on its land or near its land or in its uh, land that it still retains the rights to hunt fish gather on, it has treaty rights on, um, but it's also moving us, doubling down on our fossil fuel use, uh, quite literally, expanding and carrying nearly double the volume of fossil fuels. Um, and then where line three ends in Superior, Wisconsin, line five begins, and that travels across the state eastward um, and cuts through the Bad River Reservation, which is in the northwestern part of Wisconsin. In 2017, the Bad River tribe they, um, they ordered Embridge to leave the reservation, shut down the pipeline, and they did this as a sovereign nation. Embridge refused and it continues to transport oil through its reservation after um, being ordered to cease and desist by the tribe. Um, and with the timeline, it's being constructed in Minnesota right now. It's nearing completion. It's a little past 80% complete, the construction of the new Line 3. And like I was saying, if complete, it will take a new route, endanger new lands, and carry even more fossil fuels. That's interesting. Um, I know there was, uh, and all the scandal was, was there for that, I know, but, uh, you know, that there was a, a protest some time ago talking about it. And I, I, I regret that I didn't get to that, but I, I know it was going on at the time. Um, so it's kind of an interesting conundrum we're under. Uh, you know, we're <laughs> we need we need energy to run our to run the country and different things, but you know there is a push to look for alternative sources. And you know, my feeling is it seems like the lobby for for this company is pretty strong. I would think the fact that they just went ahead. So. Anyway, it's, it's just, I appreciate your comments on that. Um, committee, uh, Alder Lefebvre, go ahead. Yeah, I have a question, uh, Justice. Did, was it the Bad River you said had uh, told them to uh, remove themselves from the reservation? Was that the, the one? The... Yeah, yes. it was the okay. Bad River yeah. tribe. Did, did, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, did I'm they? Tough. Did they do any uh, legal? Did they go to court uh, to enforce their treaty rights? Yeah, in 2019, 
they opened a case, and I believe it's still pending that it's working its way up the court system. Um, so nothing's come out of that yet, and they're still putting oil through the reservation. Yeah. So the fact that it's pending and they're still building, correct? Which is interesting. So I, I guess I just, you know, I don't know. I don't really have an opinion one way or the other on that. I'm just, just saying. Uh, Alder Stevens, Alder Vanderlease. I know Alder Vanderlease, you did speak on how you want to proceed on this, but Alder Stevens, do you have any thoughts on this? Not at this time. Okay. Alder Vanderlease, did you want to speak? Can I ask Justice uh, one question? Has the federal government, have, have they chimed in on this? Has it gone to the federal level? Um, Basically, the federal level has the authority of going ahead and, or stopping the, the uh, pipeline. Is that correct? The federal authority, they issue key permits that are needed for the pipeline to go through. Um, I know the state does as well, that um, the state issues permits that are necessary for this line. So there's, um, there's both the federal and state jurisdiction. And I know it is possible for this to be shut down by the current administration that uh, due to the same reasons they were able to shut down the Keystone XL would be possible because this line crosses the Canadian border. It requires a certain permit from the administration. So there's, um, it's, there's one thing that um, the movement is working on putting pressure on the current administration. But um, I feel like local action is a good way to. Oh, okay. Very um, much. That All right, Alder Dorf and then Alder Lefebvre. Thank you, Justice. I wanna read the last um, Be It Resolved and ask you why this is in here. Uh, be it finally resolved that the mayor and common council of the city of Green Bay hereby recommend that the Green Bay chief of police reject any request for mutual aid by another law enforcement agency for the purpose of protecting and bridge property along lines three or five or for suppressing resistance to end bridge activities along lines three or five. Why would we tell our chief of police not to render mutual aid? Yeah, in 2016, with um, what was going on in Standing Rock at that time with the Dakota Access Pipeline, how Indigenous people were resisting the pipeline through um, being rerouted through their reservation without consent of the tribe. Um, Wisconsin, five counties in Wisconsin ended up sending police and police were sending aid to the resistance, um, to the police in North Dakota. Uh, cracking down on the resistance. So there's a precedent for police in Wisconsin sending aid to these sorts of things. And if Green Bay is um, stating support for moving away from the fossil fuels and not continuing this line, I feel like it would be a good move to keep our police from providing any aid to those also resisting the line. I think it would be a controversial move because we do extend mutual aid when asked as we expect it to be extended to us. But that's all I'll say on that topic. Thank you for explaining that. Yeah, thank you. Um, all the, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Justice. Thank you. Um, so just to talk about the um, sort of the tactics that the police were using at the Dakota Access Pipeline encampments that um, were sticking dogs on people, that um, spraying them with hoses in the middle of the night in freezing cold weather, a lot of uh, spray rubber bullets. And mostly all those same tactics are being used to crack down on the protesters protesting line three expansion, that rubber bullets are being used on peaceful protesters, that people are being pulled out of ceremony while it's being held out there. They're, we want yep. being cut in front of them. Um, they've used helicopters to create artificial sandstorms during demonstrations to try to clear protesters. Have you seen this, Justice? Have you seen some of this firsthand? Um, I've seen videos of it. Okay, All right. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, like anything else, these pipelines, you know, there's uh, 
there's a lot of money involved, you know, for, for, well, and I'm not saying good, bad, or indifferent. I'm just saying that, you know, do you, is there any idea what this pipeline uh, is costing and what effect there would be if, um, it, if it was stopped? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Are you okay? Somebody sneezed. Is there anybody that can help me on that? You know, as far as, you know, I, I realize it's kind of a, a shot in the dark. But you know, if this if this pipeline was stopped, you know what what trickle down effect would that have all the way through? I don't know. Am I asking the right question? If if not, good question, Mark. Very yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to find out on the other side what what the cost would be. You know the then I don't know if you have that answer or not. Justice? Yeah, it's definitely yeah. a good question. I don't have. Yeah, am I coming through all right? Uh, yeah, you're breaking up a little bit, but just speak closer to the microphone. Sure. Yeah, I don't have any numbers, but I know uh, Minnesota, their department, um, it's a whereas in the resolution. One department in Minnesota um, put out a report saying that this isn't doing good for the Minnesota economy. That it's not needed. Not oh. Significant, and I feel that it's the same for Wisconsin. This is a Canadian company putting the line through, and the end of line five is in Canada as well. So um, it provides temporary jobs for construction when it's being constructed, but most of those are being brought in from out of state. So even when there are jobs created, they're temporary and the majority of the workers coming from out of state. Okay. I'm just wondering about uh, Canada, you know, the fact that it's coming from Canada into the U.S. So on the federal level or national level, I just like to know, you know, are U.S. senators involved in this at all? I mean, it just seems like it's above and beyond us. Although I understand you're looking for local support. I understand where you're coming from, but it, it would be nice to know you know, the deal that a Canadian company is sending this through the U.S., you know, obviously they're doing it. So they must have got a, approval somehow. And there's got to be some kind of benefit somewhere, some monetary benefit to other companies that are working on this. So I guess I'm just trying to get a little handle on that. That's all. Yeah, and I feel yeah. that it's important to know the cost of not acting on um, taking climate action that just the loss that we'll have in tourism and how that would affect Green Bay if this were to uh, spill in the Straits of Mackinac, where earlier this year, Michigan's governor, Gretchen Whitmer, she ordered Enbridge to, to um, down operations under the Straits of Mackinac because they felt it was such a risk to the Great Lakes. Um, the pipeline, Line 5, that goes under the Straits of Mackinac currently exposed. It's supposed to be resting the whole lake on the sandy bottom of the lake. And it's not. It's uh, a lot of points are exposed. It's not resting on sand. When it was created, the engineers that designed it said that this should be shut down in 55 years. It has a lifespan of about 55 years. And it's been well past that. It's around 70 years now. It's been in the ground, I believe. Um, so it does pose a serious threat uh, to the Great Lakes being in the Strait of Mackinac that were to spill in the Lake Michigan. Is it, is it laying on the surface of uh, below the water or is it uh, underground? It's under the water. Under the water. In the water, but it's exposed. Okay. All right, Alder Lefebvre. Yes, um, two things as Justice had mentioned, number five, um, it has been, um, I think, I don't know what agency they were looking at it and they did say that if there was a spill, if five burst and there was a spill, it would never be able to be cleaned up and it would move because of the currents, it would spread through Lake Michigan and it would just flow and it would be very difficult to um, remedy it this is, this is a really bad one where they put it through. 
And I do, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't, you know, I think this is really bad, that part. But um, I want to ask Justice, you had mentioned something about Minnesota. I thought I read where they denied something on the permits, I thought. Um, right now, it is being constructed. So it may have been denied in the past. Initially going for the permits and then they've been over their field. But at the moment they do have all the permits and it is being constructed right now. Okay. And and you want to talk about what I really find disturbing is this is a Canadian company where the money is going back to Canada. There's very little the United States is gaining from this. It's not to our benefit. As Justin had mentioned, it's going through us from Canada going through us to Canada. It's for their benefit. And that's why we really have to look at this I, issue. I agree with you on that. Make sure that we, uh, yeah, that we, you know, yeah, what, what benefit, this. Benefit. we really got to get something done on this, yeah. What benefit is uh, the American people is this, I guess. That, that, that is a good question. You know, like I said, it's a Canadian company. And like I said, I know we're arguing of semantics here in that. Um, we're, we're, we're supposed to be looking at the resolution, but you know, I think a lot of us, you know, desire clean water and, and clean air and all the good things that come with the quality of life living in the Midwest, and especially the Great Lakes. You know, 20% of all the fresh water in the world lies right here. We're pretty proud of that. We're also an ocean port in Green Bay, which is kind of amazing. So, yeah. You know, we, we've done some good things with water and we've done some bad things. So I I guess for me personally, just looking at some of the whereas is talking about the catastrophic oil spills, it would be nice, and I don't know if I have to go online for this, but it would be nice to have a map showing some of the affected areas, um, maybe the amount of money that was spent to clean those up. You know, I suppose we can dig that stuff out, but it sounds like there have been a couple of these over time, and, and you have numbers there talking about the amount of oil that was spilled. So you're saying in Crystal Falls. In fact, I, got, I have good friends that live in Crystal Falls. I should call them <laughs> and talk about the effects on the environment there. If there's anything like that, I, you know, like I said, I don't know. It would be nice to have. I mean, this is, a, this is a fairly comprehensive one, and I and I appreciate all your efforts, by all means. I do appreciate your efforts on this. Uh, the, does the committee have anything more to ask of justice at this time? Otherwise, uh, we could get back to regular order. Anybody? I see Alder Johnson's here. Alder Johnson, do you have anything that you want to bring in? No, okay. I can, I'll, I'll contribute after you close the floor, Mark. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Uh, thank you again, Justice. So I, I entertain a motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor. Okay, by Stevens, seconded by Vanderlees. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. All right. Uh, well, Alder Johnson, I, I thought I'd throw throw it out to you right away if you got something. Otherwise, we can wait till the committee speaks on it, but. Yeah, I, I mean, generally speaking, I mean, I, I think there's, you know, some very common ground that can be found in um, the concerns related to running, you know, pipes to the Great Lakes. And it's a, admittedly a piece that I want to research and understand a little bit more. And I appreciate uh, the time that Justice just spent here, you know, giving us a real cursory review of what's happening. And I think it's very helpful um, to understand that and, and to the point, you know, how it's... Uh, <laughs> really a Canadian pipeline, um, you know, that isn't really servicing us, but I just want to understand, you know, implications of that. Um, I, I would support a referral to staff just to vet this out a little bit. Um, there's, if, but if there's one clause, and Alderdorf alluded to this, that I would even recommend that, that the committee tonight uh, just strike simply because I do think it will uh, create a little bit of controversy and quite frankly I think people will oppose it based on that clause alone and that is the one related to mutual aid um, I think it'd be a dangerous precedence for us um, uh, to really 
you know, make a recommendation to our police department that they place, you know, politics above public safety. Um, I, I think that's a dangerous road to go down. Um, and, and quite frankly, if the point is to get this passed and to get your council to be supportive of it, I think that is the one clause that will probably create the highest level of uneasiness uh, amongst many council members. So my preference that that item be removed, and I think you know it, it, it makes it a much more um, harmonious resolution that I think more members of our council will get behind. Okay, thank you, Alder Johnson. Alder Scannell. Yeah, I I, uh, I saw I that resolution. I mean that part of the resolution. I also had uh, wondered if I should. Uh, I mean I did do some edits before, and I was wondering if I should edit that or not. And I thought I'd leave it in and see, you know, what discussion we had. But like I said before, anything that people feel are uncomfortable oh. with, I, I think it's fine to yep. delete, change, or whatever. Yep. So, well, you know, and I to Alder Johnson's point, um, you know, I think the fact that. You know, Justice talked about various police departments coming in and helping, and it sounded like it, it was all bad, <laughs> bad effect. But there's no guarantee that, you know, all police departments would do that. I'm sure there would be some that would be there for safety as well. But otherwise, it sounds like they're just being hired by that company to help push forward their agenda. So I, yeah, I, I, that's a little bit of a loaded thing, too. And uh, I, I agree with Alder Johnson on that as well. Um, you know, there's plenty in here that is still effective, I believe. Committee, anybody? Alder Lefebvre? I, I agree that there is a problem with that, but I will say, I will also um, go ahead with what Justice said. I have seen and I read about reports what happened uh, with the other um, pipeline, and uh, it was pretty awful what they did to the, they were peaceful protesters. It was pretty awful what some of the police officers did do. And I can see where they're kind of, they're really concerned about it. But um, as Alder Johnson had mentioned, it's something that, yeah, you got to kind of watch how you word that and do that. And yeah, I would say that what should be taken out. I, I agree. Okay. Anybody else? Alder Dorf? So the other thing that I would want to see taken out from the first, therefore be it resolved, just because it's not specific enough, um, it, it talks about that the mayor and common council of the city of Green Bay support the rights in the Schwabi, is that, I don't know if I'm, I'm probably saying it wrong, to hunt, fish and gather established by treaties, that's fine, including their actions to protect the land and waters of the upper Mississippi and Great Lakes watersheds. I don't know what those actions are. I, I, I don't want to support just actions that I don't know what they are. Um, I would want to say the first part of that's fine and um, to hunt, fish and gather is established by treaties and to protect the waters of the Great Lakes. But I, I need that part out because I can't. Just to refresh where, what page is that on again? Page the one. Last page. It's the le therefore be it resolved. Go all the way to the resolution. Okay. Not all right. Not the whereas is, and the whereas is can do some work, but I, I think it's more the therefore be it resolved. I think the second be it resolved is great to oh. raise, but let's start stop at the first one. Okay. The first one. Gather established by treaties, and I don't want to say including their actions, because I don't. I support their rights, but I don't know what their actions could be. I just see, you see what oh. I'm saying? Could be some bad actions. I don't want bad actions. I don't want to support those. So the next oh. one I think is great um, to raising the awareness. It. Um, I, I have no problem with that one. Um, hmm. Does this, the, oh. the next one, does this mean that we we're just saying this in the resolution. We're not going to do something. We're not it's, calling. It's not um, binding. It's not a no, binding so resolution. Just, we're saying it because it does cross so many steps. And then I, I would end it right after immediately on, on the next and get rid of that, be it finally resolved, that whole mutual aid thing. I would, I would not vote for it with that in it. 
So uh, maybe I'll, that's why I'm just, this, we're trying to edit this. It's, it's huge. It's, it's long. long. I don't think, honestly, they're 80% done. Why does this have to get done tonight? And why does uh, it get I asked, I wanted to know about the time sensitivity for this. I mean, if, if they're already billing in Minnesota, then it sounds like things are being held up in the courts. I mean, you could wait a year or two years or a month. So I, you know, it's, I guess that was the question I wanted to ask of Justice. And Rand, maybe uh, Alder Scandal, you can answer that as far as time sensitivity. Right. It, it, yeah. There, there, there's, it, we'd like to get this done sooner than later. And I would just say, sure. that to, I was hoping the committee would go through it and take out what you want. And if there's some things you're not sure of, I mean, we've got till council. I mean, we can also go over it again then. I mean, I thought the committee would go. I, well, I was tempted to take out more when I went through this myself, but I thought, I'm not yeah. sure what, what uh, you know, other elders would, you know, think about. Well, you know, it's important that committee, the committee looks at it, but, you know, it's it's kind of a, it's a big issue, you know. I, I think the entire council would want to weigh in, and I'm thankful that Alder Johnson and Alder Dorf are here, so we have half the council here. So, well, you could kick, you, and I, you, yeah, you seven, know, seven council the members. The committee would have the first kick at it to yeah. you know, make significant changes that they felt they wanted to make, and then uh, alders yeah. look over, and and then we can pick it up again at council. It, you know, a lot of the line, a lot of the whereas is where they speak about, you know, geographic facts and different things like that. I mean, there's there's a lot of it in the first page that's just okay. That's just informational. But it, when it gets to the point where opinions are being brought forward, you know, it's kind of like okay, I kind of agree, but. I'm not 100% sure. And I, to tell you the honest truth, I looked, I read through it, but I'm not 100% solid on it. You know, I did, I've looked at it a couple of times and it's, um, to me, it, it seems like it just needs a, a little bit more work. And I, I, we've talked about a couple of points that, you know, Alder Johnson and Alder Dorf brought up a couple. We could take that out. I'm, I'm wide open for that, but I, when you throw an opinion, you know, even the history of catastrophic spills, okay, well, I, I like, well, you know, you can have 10 people talk about it and what is catastrophic, you know, one cup of oil or, you know, a lot and da da da. You know, I know it's kind of a picky point, but that's just one thing that I'm a little bit, eh, okay. Committee, anybody else here? I'm, I'm wide open. I can make a comment, Mark. Go ahead, Alder Van least. I don't think the resolution is, is ready for the for the city council yet. I think that the legal, the city council has, has no legal, real knowledge of, of the legal part of it. And, and I think it, it's not ready for the city council to weigh in on it and, and to make a judgment, a proper judgment at this time. It should go to the, to the legal voices first and then they should be bringing it back at that time. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you for that. Uh, Attorney Bungert, I, I probably know the answer to this as you know, you have not, your office has not been directed to look at this at all, but do you have any initial thoughts on this or as far as, I mean, you're, you're waiting for a direction from the committee. Correct, right. I, I, I'm not prepared to, to kind of give any opinion as to what would be functioning. Right. I kind of, I knew, that, I, knew that answer, I knew that answer, I just needed to hear yeah. it again. It's, it's right. to refer to staff. Yeah, exactly. We could. Right. All right. Um, I, I I really wish if there's. I mean, if it's not ready, I mean, we have I, to give staff direction. If there's something in particular you want. No, I. Well, here's the thing. You could say refer to staff, and then make up their mind. But you know, the committee. You know, you could cherry pick it and say, well, seven, nine, fourteen, take right. those out, right. but maybe thirteen do keep half. I mean. Right. You can have, you know, so basically if we refer it to staff, you know, we're trusting the staff will do something, but they need some direction from us too. So <laughs> that's the conundrum for me. Um, I would say refer to staff, you know, if, if we could get someone to make that motion. But if we, with that being said, you know, we could pick a couple of these off right away and then, I don't know. I'm at a loss right now. Sorry, I need some help on this. Mark, I'd make a motion that we we, we refer to the legal 
to the legal department and let them look it over. And they're the minds that are better trained than the city council, believe me. And um, they will give us a recommendation at that time. I, I think the recommendation that I would like to see from the law department would be just to say, okay, we're, we're overstepping our bounds on points seven, eight, and nine, but not so much. I would think that that would be part of it. The attorney a suggestion would be- have a chance be... to look at it. Okay. Hasn't even had a chance to look at it yet, Mark. Right, we right. have to send it in the right direction. The, okay. the, the law department, they're the legal department, let them handle it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Attorney Bunker? Yes, that would be fine. Um, staff can certainly also review um, tonight's discussion um, amongst the alders and the committee. And then ultimately, if this gets pulled and discussed at council, um, staff will review what the discussion was um, at council. Hey, uh, I have a feeling no matter what happens, mm -hmm. it will be pulled at council, I'm sure of it. Alder Scannell. Right. I, I, if I would recommend that the committee take uh, under Alder uh, Dorst and Alder Johnson's recommendations right now tonight and recommend that those changes be made tonight. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. And that's, and that's there's that, that'll be a start, and then we can have further discussion at council. Right, staff, I don't think staff would be. They're not going to be ready. Out. They're not going to be ready. Right. Well, I think what we could do at city council, then I think what would happen is we could come up with some kind of a conclusion. And if we decide to refer it back to staff at that time, after we make the decision here, then, then we go that route. But I can only speculate how that'll go. I'm not sure. All right. Um, then, then I, then I, I just asked yeah. to go from staff to council. And then if it needs to go to staff again. Right. Okay, That's you. fine. Thank we can discuss that. Yeah. Uh, Alder Van you made a motion. Alder Stevens, you have a comment? I I would recommend that we take what Alder Dorf and um, Alder Johnson stated and remove that tonight before we send this. Okay. Out. All right. So Alder, Alder Johnson, do you agree? Alder Van are you good with that? Yes, I'm okay. okay. All right. So like this, that, then, I, then I'll second his motion. Okay. All right, so that the motion would be to refer to staff with the changes that we made tonight. And just to clarify, I just wanna make sure we have the right one. So it would be the last be it finally resolved, correct, Alder Johnson? Uh, that's correct, yes. That one too. Okay. So that would be yeah. specifically um, for, for Mary and for Celestine for the record. Um, so that would be a motion to refer to staff um, with a specified revision to the last be it resolved paragraph to remove language. Oh, wait. So, so, sorry, yeah. Attorney Bunker. Yeah, I mean, Alders Johnson and Dorf, it would be appropriate for you to provide those to me in writing. Okay, that'll work fine. Okay, Alder Lefebvre. Sorry, but I think there's a couple more. The, the last ones should be taken out. Uh, I like the now, therefore, be it resolved. The first one is very good. The second one, I don't know if we need that one. The third one, the fourth, yes. And then the last one, no. Well, there's, think, there's four, we, we there's four of them. Which we one's which one? Down. Okay, the first one, and at the end, now, therefore, be it resolved. That, that one, I think, definitely has to be in. I think the second one should come out. The be it further one, resolved. You're yep. talking about the one that says honorsearth.org. Yes. You were saying that one should come out? Uh, yes. The mayor, let's see. Okay, let's go back. The first one. Now, therefore, be resolved the mayor and the common council of Green Bay by supporting the rights of the. Honest Right. Okay. Yeah. The second one. Be it further resolved, the mayor, common council, the city of Green Bay call on all residents of Green Bay to wear, raise awareness of this important issue. It'll be in the news, I think, and people can talk about this and we can have more meetings. Um, the third one, be it further resolved that the mayor, common council, and the city of Green Bay call upon the Wisconsin D DNR to reject. Oh, well, wait, that one could stay in. Um, the right. next <laughs> one. <laughs> yes, and then the, that's the fourth one, be it resolved that the mayor and common council of the city of Green Bay call upon every elected official, that one should stay in, and then the last one. 
That's the one you. Okay, yeah. so, but so the, the one two and five, two and five. If you're looking yeah, at, I think so. It kind of. Well, um, I guess I don't fully understand. I mean, you know, the controversy on that. Well, it's a native organization. Well, well, you're you're telling the city to go out there and. Yeah. I don't know. It's is the city going to be promoting this? They got their. This is a resolution. This is what we're sending to the state. Right. And all right, is, I, they're all, all, I think the other groups are the ones that should be, you know, putting this out and letting people know. I think it'll come better from the groups that are really involved, the Native um, communities that are really impacted by this. I think it would come across much better. If, you know, if we and uh, we're just you know, affirming no. that we also agree with them. So if we take these out, someone's going to pull it at council anyhow. And then they might put it back in. So I'm just saying. But this is part of our okay, so, if you, so if you're looking at all their, what Alder Johnson said, that it's final, be it finally resolved, and you're looking at number mm -hmm. two there, the be it further resolved with the honor of Earth of Oregon that. So those two, those two so far. Uh, and Alder Dorf, can you hit me one more time with yours? Well, mine was to remove the last item two. I was exactly yes, the same right. Time. Okay. I am I'm actually working on it right now. That okay. is going up to the very first, therefore be it resolved. Um it would this is how it would read. You don't have to write it down because I'm doing it. Now therefore be it resolved that the mayor and common council of the city of Green Bay support the rights of the Anishinaabe mm -hmm. to hunt, fish, gather as established by treaties. To, and then just I'm taking out including their actions. And then it would just say to protect, established by treaties to protect the land and waters of the upper Mississippi and Great Lakes watershed on which those rights are practiced by opposing the construction of Enbridge's lines three and five. Okay, so I'm taking out those four words. Including the actions, right? Yeah, including their actions, yes. That's three words. So those three. Well, I mean, and then there's a comma. I mean, okay, so you got to take out established by treaties, take out the comma, including their actions. So established by treaties to protect the land and water. So there's that little comma there. So don't call it a word, but it's. Well, and the fact is you got by opposing the construction of, I mean, the, it's obvious that they oppose the construction of that. Does it need to be stated again? You know, I don't know. That, that, that's just. <laughs> Isn't this the reason why we're sending this to staff so they can clarify and reword? And yeah. the two alders are supposed to send emails over to the clerk's office. Which I've got. Yeah. I'm done. Well, then, okay, I'll, I'll okay like so I the motion, the, okay, the motion, uh, Alder Vanderlees, you want to refer this to staff, correct? That's correct. The law we, have, we don't have a second. We had a second yes, on that? I had a second. It's already been motion right. second already. Okay. All right. So, uh, Attorney Bungard, could you read that back to us? You know, just the I motion was to refer to staff, but go ahead. Yeah, the motion was to refer to staff um, and, and the specific language that the committee wanted is gonna be provided to the clerk's office, but essentially it's motion to refer to staff um, with revisions as, as directed by the committee. Okay, I guess we'll, we'll go with that. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? It passes. Thank you for a hearty discussion all, and thank you again, Justice, for that, for your uh, input. Mm -hmm. All right. So here we are. I got to look at the agenda. Are you ready, Mary? Yes, I'm ready. All right, informational, if you're part of the meeting, the liquor violation report for September 13th, 2021. Police? Police, we don't have any uh, violations for this month. So everything is an ideal society. Everything's working out well. That's beautiful. <laughs> All right. Even place on file. Okay, do we have a second? Oh, well, it's informational. Second. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay.
Okay, the report on homelessness for the Green River Police Department and uh, uh, Lieutenant, I, I did see you with Alder Lefebvre today at the Police Department. We were talking about some things and I just, could you uh, please reiterate, you know, Alder Galvin, you know, his initial request and I, I mean, you can repeat it for the committee. So go ahead and then give us the report. Thank you. Yeah, the project that we took on from Alder Gallon's request ended in August. So I sent out last the last meeting, the final homeless tracking report. Uh, I believe uh, you'd gotten that. And then that, um, I think that went to council and was uh, received place on file. Right. Um, right. But yeah, the project ended in, on August. So I guess the, any continuing homeless reports wouldn't be on, uh, shouldn't, shouldn't have been on until after August. Okay. All right, committee, do you have any concerns with that? I, I mean, it sounds good to me. I mean, we, we've looked at this probably six, or six months now or five months at least. And, you know, when winter, when winter comes, you know, more most folks will be indoors for the most part. You know, it, it seems like the concerns are always during the warmer months where people are out in the streets and that type of thing. I do appreciate the efforts that the department, you know, Lieutenant Allen and Others have put into this. I think they've done a great job. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, it seems like there were certain things that kind of cropped up over and over again with certain people. So, you know, and some of those things you can't do a whole lot about. So I don't know, um, I'm good with that. A committee, do you have anything to add? I just want to say one thing, Mark. Yep. Uh, I think that, you know, it's it's been a lot smoother this past year. Than, than the previous year as far as the homelessness. I, I think we've made some progress forward. I think St. John's has done a pretty good job. You know, if, if you go by there, they, they have people that are, you know, trying to reach out to the people that are really struggling. So I, I think that, you know, we, we've done much better this year in 2021. So mm -hmm. that's my, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Anybody else, any of the other alders, committee members or other alders have anything? All right, I would entertain a motion. Receive and place on file. Place on file. Okay, by Stephen, seconded by Vanderlist. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. What does this word mean? Adjournment. What does that mean? <laughs> Time to go home. <laughs> motion motion to adjourn. Stevens and seconded by Lafave. Mm -hmm. All right. Very enjoyable. Thank, thanks for all the dialogue tonight. Thanks a lot. Alder Johnson, call me after the meeting, not during the meeting. Thank you.